On this episode of the Deep Pockets Podcast, we got Q Banks in the building. If you don't know who he is, he is the creator of FIP, Wall Street Academy, and Top Tier Trader, a few businesses that have changed a lot of lives. But all of that started with the foundation of trading, and he has dominated the charts for a long, long time. In this podcast, he shares all of the knowledge he has accumulated over the last decade, and I'm sure you guys are absolutely going to love it and gain so much insight from it. So without further ado, enjoy Swaggy C and Q Banks. Gang, welcome back to the Deep Pockets podcast. We actually just finished a 20 minute video early on, which was fire. But right now we got to sit down more formal, more professional, more active interview with the one and only Q Banks what's himself good, good? is in the <laughs> building. Listen, we don't got too much time, but we're going to make it worth everybody's time for watching right now. Um, and I just want to get right into it. That's good. Let's get it. Right into it. When you look back on your life, you know, the early Target days, the early FIP days, the early Wall Street Academy days, do you ever sit back? Because I'm a real nostalgic person. Yeah. Do you ever look back at those moments and then look at where you are right now and be like, wow, like I, I actually did it? You know what I mean? Yeah. No. <laughs> 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 no, nah, man, because um, I, I feel like this right here. Like, I mean, I'm not too, too sure if you will agree, but at the same time, um, I'm very, very confident in myself. Um, I had no doubts within myself. I understood, like, you know, how I want to live on what I want, like, where I want to live, like, all these things. So I feel like, bro, like, I truly feel like I manifested, I manifested, like, every single thing that I have, like, going on now. So so it's not like I look back and, like, say, say to myself, like, God damn, like, I, I really did it. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, damn, like, this is real. Gotcha. I had no, no doubts about it. You know what I'm saying? And I feel confident about that. And even from, like, Let's say like my early posts and everything on IG and that kind of stuff. I used to always speak the same exact way on how I, I speak now. So like every single thing that I was talking about from back then, it was just a matter of time that, you know, I found like um a certain vehicle that that could actually get me to that certain point. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? That so makes perfect sense. It was like sense. no doubts, but yeah. Like, okay. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I get it. I get it. Cause like, no doubts. You for know me, what I'm saying? I like, had no doubts, but I'm just like, damn, like all these more efforts like in my, in my college and, and, you know, partying yeah. and all these stuff. And I'm over here studying the charts, but it actually... It obviously yeah, paid off, you but, know. But, but, but remember, like everybody has their own way on how on how they perceive their life to actually go. O- obviously, those people and everything that pretty much wants so much but gives so little, um, the result is always the same exact thing every single time. Nothing. No, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. So, I'm only gonna ask one question from the Target store because I feel yeah. like there's more, you know, bigger and things to talk about, like the, the current yeah. day to day stuff. Yeah. But you had mentioned on a recent podcast um, that I watched. Shout out to, I think, the Forest Beginner podcast. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to him. Dope podcast. Dope podcast. Like, yeah. um, you had mentioned that you had your epiphany moment where you walked outside and it was raining, but there was, like, carts everywhere at Target. Yeah, yeah. And you had to, like, do that. People were taking their shirts off. and Yeah, man. Like, um, I'm Talk not, about that a little bit. I'm not too sure if you ever seen that photo. No, I haven't seen the photo. Um, But it's on, like, my website and everything. Like, it's, like, right one of, like, the uh, main photos and everything. Connor, we'll attach that as a B-roll yeah, to, yeah, to this it's, podcast. Um, so, yeah, like... uh. It was a late night, crazy, busy day, and that kind of stuff. All kind of customers and that kind of thing, right? So, like, which means that carts is everywhere or on, on the parking lot. So, th- this is the this, this is the Target that's all the way in Sawgrass. You oh, know, that, here, here though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That Super Target. I didn't want I didn't want to work at a Target in my city at the time because I'm like, yo, I'll be damned if I'm at Target and everything else, <laughs> and everybody <laughs> see me and that kind of stuff. I'm good. I'm gonna go far away. I feel you. I, I, I'm gonna go all the way down here, like about ten miles away and everything else. So, like, if I do see a person, I'm gonna. It's probably gonna be like once a week and, and that if kind of that, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in my local city, nah, I, I'm not with it. So yeah, man. Um, I went outside and that kind of stuff. It's, it's kind of drizzling and whatnot. And then every, everybody's so excited to actually go outside and actually like work super, super hard to actually take all these carts back inside. But I'm like, yo, listen, like, I'm not taking off my shirt, bro. Like, <laughs> like yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not doing it's that e- extra ness, like, bro. Like, I'm only getting paid like eight twenty an hour. Like, I'm not doing too much, you know. So at the same time, like, um. People that were actually willing to actually go that extra route, um, I, I feel as if like they actually stayed at Target for a couple of years, and I couldn't stay there based on just like you know, the kind of um hassle that they're putting me through as far as like only paying that small amount of money, but yeah, also yeah. like the fact that um it couldn't get me to where I wanted to be. Absolutely. The time that I spent there was um valuable for for the main fact that I'm a very, very social person, mm-hmm. so like. Being a part of that actually got me, um, you know, back social because I, I felt like I went through like a little bit of depression from not working, only working on my computer for the past like five months and everything, even looking for a job. 
Um, that's when I actually just got into like affiliate marketing yep. and that kind of stuff. I was, bro, I was on the computer like this every single day, not talking to nobody, not interacting with nobody. So I had to get a job that was social enough to actually, you know, feel like, you know, I was a part of society again in some kind of way. When you said you were social, you know, in terms of uh, like being, being there and things of that nature, yeah. do you feel like there's some people from that job who've taking taking your courses and taking anything like that because they saw like oh you went from here to here honestly um to think about it probably only like one person out of like my that's crazy co-workers like about eight people nine people that actually took it but none of them actually took it as serious as i would have taken it you know what i'm saying true. because i was at target and everything still showing that i was having like some 1k days yep, 500 yep. all the days and everything but you know people would always look at me like hold on wait so like if you're making that then why are you here i'm like you know what you're right. Like, why am I here? You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> but um, Good point. it was just, um, you know, that, that that timing thing. Like, I do believe that, like, you know, once your business n needs you more than your job needs you, then yep. that's when it's time to actually leave. You got to bounce. Yeah, you got to bounce. So what was Definitely. your early days like the minute you left that point? Like, was it just like filled with 18 hour days? Did you balance mm -hmm. that out with like the party and the X, Y, and Z? And things nah, like, like after I left Target, um, like I mentioned, like I had went on the grass that next day and just sleep laid on, on, on the grass and just like sat there like what the fuck is going on like like what's next it's kind of like after you graduate high school like you sitting in the bed the, 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 the next day knowing that there's no school tomorrow blah yep. blah, blah. Yep. and you got to figure out like you know like what's next you know so like um after that like I, I literally just dedicated all my time to just trading like trying to actually learn the charts and everything because once I actually left Target I just freed up an extra six seven hours out of my entire day to now dedicate that to studying exactly and that kind of thing so I feel like it was just more just trying to figure out like what to do with that extra time? Because now I had an extra six days, six hours each and every single day. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So like, it wasn't easy to actually fill up, but I think I had my community grown enough to the point that it it took up some of that time. You know? That makes sense. So fast forwarding to today, this is a big question. This is for me personally. Yeah. How do you <clears throat> adapt to the industry so quickly? And I'm going to give you an example is because when traders wanted to get funded but they didn't even really know they wanted to get funded correct like they were maybe two funding companies out there maybe yeah, you guys two, you know what yeah. i mean you guys started top tier and this was in 2021 when i was in texas and i saw the video i'm like oh what is this i i really i knew what it was but i didn't really know how to get involved in it now it's 2024 and now i'm starting to start a prop firm but you guys are already about to be three years in how do you adapt to the industry so quickly when it's like oh the, the marketplace wants this i'm gonna give them this bro because um I mean, we we've been around for a long ass time before, like, like when I started, like there was literally about maybe probably three, four groups, yeah, max. You know what I'm saying? No signal providers, no like all all the stuff that you're seeing now. There was none of that. You know what I'm saying? Like there was no kind of people going that extra route to, yep. to make sure people are profitable in some kind of way. Yep. Um, there were you know like the market maker method yeah, and everything, yeah, MMR yeah, method. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep all the um, SMEs and EMAs, like mm -hmm. all these things, like it was complex like that. It was not a person that was pretty much focused on on um, technical analysis and that kind of stuff. So like those people weren't really around yet. So I feel like every single thing that, that we came across, like we pretty much understood that the people wanted more for that certain um, area because we were early on. So like we're paying attention to little, all the small shifts and everything that we came across that like we're pinpointing all, all those things. Watching. It could be a prop firm. It could be um, a trading platform, yep, yep. trade locker, and that kind of stuff. It could be all, all the small things that, trade locker. that people are looking for within the, the niche and everything to, to get better at, at, at a certain field. So people like um, that we came across and everything, like they actually, well, well, I feel like we actually listened to our network yep. a lot. Yep. So people that actually came around, like they would always talk to us and be like, yo, like, you know, it would be cool if this happened or this happened or this happened. Oh, damn, like, bro, like, I don't know how to actually get capital. Okay, cool. Like, let's figure out let's a way on how to actually get people capital in some kind of way got you so when so when we actually came up with top tier like it was a perfect time because we started to actually interact with people that had the connections to actually get that type of technology to then start up a company to actually you know do so so i feel like we, we, we always just align ourselves with people that can actually benefit our companies knowing that they pretty much had an extra step in a different industry that we never even knew about so like, we always had people that that was around us to actually bless us with a certain type of, of information to help us grow in some kind of way love that yeah Switching over to a different topic, how long do you feel, and you don't have to give a time to no, at all, no. but like, how long do you feel like day trading is going to be a vehicle for you? And here's another example, because I always said that like, I'm going to keep day trading, but if I have a business that has a $250 million exit 
It may be a little bit slow, and I may move on towards investments and, and long-term things, but I don't know if I'll on the charts every single day after I done exited for 250 M's. <clears throat> What is your mindset? Are you going to trade till the day you nah. die? So I, I, I think this. So if you get that exit, right? Well, when you get that exit, you know what I'm saying? i that, my brother. My <laughs> I'm brother, you feel me? Existed. So when you get that exit for 250 mil, you will treat trading kind of like, um, you know, a little side vibe. But at the same time, you, will, you, you might still get even more excited with trading at that point now. It may be bigger, you think? No, like you'll get excited on it because it's still small money compared to like that 250. But at the same time, it's from something that you've been new about for so long. So first I feel like love. it'll, it'll kind of, ex- yeah, that, that that first love vibe. So so it's kind of like what I was telling you about, Um, you know, like the, the other day I, I was trading on one of our, our our other platforms called Moonspin. A little, um, it's an online casino vibe, right? Gotcha. So there's not really much, much games on there, but it's games that's actually gambling and that kind of stuff, right? Obviously, we're traders and everything else. We kind of go against gambling, but yeah, yeah. this should be fun at, yeah, yeah. every now and again. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I'm not risking much money, but at the same time, like, it was still kind of exciting to actually know that I could win or like make money from a different area. So that couple $10 or $20 or $100 that I'm making on that right there, it was exciting. It's exciting. Like, it wasn't much money compared to here. But it's, it was still that, that, that small thing that was giving me that bunch of excitement. So trading might be that thing for you when that bigger thing is pretty much already there. I'll say that. That's, that's a good point. Because for the audience out there, my mindset is not, all right, I'm just going to try to get it. No, 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 I'm no, still no, trading. No, no. Actually, I'm still doing the business. I was saying example. But you got a good point because when I look at like FanDuel and like my brother and things of that nature and like we make a few pigs in terms of like the games Bro, going on. Sport bet. Yo, sport, listen. It's fun and it's not I, as much money as, you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't matter. It's, it's fun. It's just a different route. Like, I was in Vegas and everything. I had betted on, um, what was it? The Ryan Garcia. Oh, uh, yeah, and Tank. And, and, and Tank fight. Um, I think me and um, Nick had made like around 18K. <sighs> but I was excited. 18K? <laughs> what? Bro, I, oh. I, was, I was hyped. Uh. And mind you, like, on the charts, I. I could do that very, very easily, but the fact that it was from a different source, it was just new, it was fresh, it was exciting, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like just venturing off to actually different ways on how to make money and everything else from a trader, I, it's very, very hard to because we don't really make much money in other avenues, absolutely. I feel like. Absolutely. But when we actually find something that we could actually make money from in some kind of way, it's exciting no matter how much money it is. Yeah, so super exciting. Back, back to what you said about like trading and stuff. How do you balance that out with bills right now? Do you, like in auto pay. So everything right now is trading Bro. and business is extra. No, so actually um business pretty much takes care of everything and all my trading income is just like my big extra stuff that I want to actually spend on. Like the big piece though and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, like I got a, you. Any kind of cars or any kind of big purchase that I do want, I I have to trade for it. Got to do it because I don't want to dabble in safe money. Oh, like bank money is safe money. It's, uh, it's like it's secure. That's that's going to take care of every single thing that I need as far as bills and that kind of makes stuff. Sense. Maintain me. But if I want a new car, I got to earn it. I have to go on the charts. Obviously, I'll invest, um, let's say, like hundred thousand into my my account and everything. Yeah, you know, yeah. If I need to, but that has to be built up so I can actually afford that new purchase that I want. I'm not gonna take four or five hundred thousand dollars from a safe place and then put it in um you know in this brand new car. Not. Nah, I I gotta earn that money from trading. Yeah. That way, I feel like I'm earning it because um I have to make the money. I have to apply the skill. Um, from the craft and everything else, to actually, you know, make that new purchase. So if I want an AP, I got, I got to do that through trading. Yeah, bro. Like, makes sense. I feel like it's better that way. It is. You know it what I'm saying? Because say, yeah. you can easily dip into the account and, and buy whatever. But Easy. at the same time, it's just it feels, it feels more worth it knowing that you actually grinded for it. You know, it makes perfect yeah. sense. Going into the actual specifics, you said on that same podcast that uh, AU was kind of like slow money. What is the the range for newer traders who are like, let's say, a year in for where should they be at? In, in your example, yeah. if you are in their shoes versus, you know, getting <laughs> higher to the goals in the US 30 and the NAS 100s. Nah, so like um, it, was, it was AU for me because, again, it wasn't really much education back then. Right. Yeah. For a person that pretty much has access to so much education all over the place, free education, like things from free telegrams that, yep. we, uh, that, that, that we have and everything, free um, YouTube videos, like all these other ways that we pretty much give out information in some kind of way, like they're pretty much better um, off compared to back then, which means that instead of starting from AU, like you can start from probably UJ, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Or you can start from a pair that's a little bit faster than that kind of stuff versus starting with AU. AU was just my only choice at the time because for one, I was still getting educated. I was still trying to find ways on how to actually learn um, and I feel like I was trying to actually get better with my technical analysis also. So I feel like um, a person that pretty much starts now, like they could actually al- already be good at technical analysis from just the amount of, of education that, that that's actually out there, but also that um, they don't have to actually, you know, go through the ups and downs and everything, like how the person 
that didn't really have much back then. Got you. Had went through. You Makes know? sense. So I, I feel like nowadays, like UJ would would probably be like that um starting pair because you have access to so much education and that kind of thing. So so how do you balance that out with you know doing too much? Meaning like how do you balance continuously innovating for the consumer? Like yeah, like you said, funding or or the educational platform versus yo I'm. Eight, nine, ten years in, I done changed so many lives. I made this millionaire trader. I feel like I've done enough. I can kind of not relax, but like I've done enough to to help traders. Yeah. You, how those, do you balance that out? Those companies got to grow. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you just don't st- like start a brand new company and all of a sudden you just like stop. You know, yeah. that company has to grow. You got to pretty much, you know, cater to that company in, in some kind of way. Um, Like I was saying, like those companies that, that we started, like top tier is only... um. It's doing great for a company, but at the same time, like it's it's still a brand new company. It's, it's still a baby, you Got know. You. So at the same time, like we can't just say, you know, like top tier is good, leave it alone, don't worry about it. Like so, I cater time and everything else to pretty much growing those companies. Now, like those companies started, yeah, but now we got to pretty much grow those companies now, which takes years and years and years. Also, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, so like that's like that like that balance point there. Just that just knowing that like yeah, like we helped a lot of people, but the companies that we started to actually help those people, those companies also have to grow. Got you. Know? you. So, you know, directing traffic and, I, and that kind of stuff and showing people that, you know, there's different ways on how to actually um, be a part of a community and everything within this niche based off of those companies that, that we're actually starting. Kind of like, you know, in Volio. Gotcha. In Volio. Yeah. So, social media. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's like just it's more of like a, a direct um, niche compared to Instagram, which is like a bro- an open niche. Absolutely. You know, so like for traders and that kind of stuff, you know, going in Volio because now you could actually just focus on the people that you actually really want to interact with within that trading niche. Verified versus traders. just trying to. Well, you want to, it's a place that pretty much all all the people that, that you actually want to interact with, you can find them without having to search for them. Not true. But they're going to be there. You Open know? platform. Exactly. Makes sense. Does So I don't want to sound ignorant to no, the no. audience <clears throat> out there, but does a million dollars, again, I don't want to sound ignorant, does it still excite you when you make it through the business nowadays? Because I understand like trading is, is different. I'll give you again an example. You is sound that, like, ignorant. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> now listen, a million dollars, I'm still, I'm very, very happy, but for, it's crazy because like, I'll give I'll give an uh, actual clear example. Mm-hmm. I made, I want to say $800,000 in the last, I want to say 11, 12 days business-wise. Yeah. Trading, I made 70000 over the last maybe 15 days and that 70000 excited me more than the 800000 how does that feel for you, like trading money versus you know making a million dollars or five hundred thousand out through the business, bro? Same. Th- th- it's the no, same no, thing. Same, so, ha- so, no, oh, same, same thing. Same. Same. Okay. So, okay, so, okay. So, so like, um, like without doing nothing at, at all, like I could, I easily make like two fifty a month and That's everything, um, from business. But um, I'm I'm, I'm like, bro, like I don't, I don't give a fuck about that money. Like that money's gonna come, whatever. I, absolutely. But my trading money is just important and 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 it's fun because. I'm grinding. You know I'm, what I'm, work, saying? I'm working. I'm working <laughs> yeah. for that money right there. So, so I feel like it's just it's literally more like a million from just business, cool, whatever. But I don't watch that money. Like I said, like that's safe money. That that's going in an area that I don't really touch too too yep. much unless I have to. But um, the trading money is, is fun money. That's where you could actually ball out. You know, spend that extra couple hundred thousand everything on something yep. that that you're actually into and that kind of stuff versus the safe money, which is just business. Like I don't really watch how how, how that builds. How it does. The fun money is a trading money. That's gotcha. that's the exciting stuff right there. Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. I only got five quick questions left. No, it's all good. number uh, five right here. It's <clears throat> talk to the audience about it being okay. You know, like prime example, like when you make more money through trading or through the business, does your expenses go up or is it just like you're like I'm gonna keep it steady so that if I have a down month per se, it doesn't really affect it? Because some traders will, like I said, I know a trader actually. I'm not gonna say the person's no, name, they, but you know, who made, let's say, $30,000. And they, they were somebody who hasn't gotten over that threshold yet. They're making 1K, 2K. They had a 30K, you know, trade, and they spent it all on a bunch of stuff, and then, like, they blew their account the last three months, and they can't get over that hump, and they think, well, they know they did something wrong. Does your expenses go up, or even in your earlier days when you made that money, or you were, like... No, nah, no, nah, so, like, I personally feel like this. So, like, whenever I made, like, like my big jumps and everything else, um, I think I kind of maintain, like, even now, bro, like, out of all honesty, like, my monthly expenses... 25k which is crazy it's i told bro <laughs> honestly yeah like so i'm thinking about it oh like my gosh. it's like a mandatory $25,000 a month bro like yeah like that's like so i'm like i'm barely even touching like what i'm making a month because like you know majority of that is being saved so like the people that that pretty much is making let's say 150 but also spent also spending, spending that 150 
um, that's when things kind of go left eventually because, you know, it, it starts to get, like, off balance. Wait, real quick. When you say 25, does that not, not including the business? That's just your personal life? No, no. That's personal. No, like, 25K is, like, mandatory expenses mandatory. that I have to pay. As far, you. you know, mortgage, yeah. insurance, you know, like, that kind of stuff. You, you know okay, what I'm saying? Okay. So, like, I have a mandatory 25K expenses that I have to spend um, mm. every single month, which is light compared to what I'm making everywhere else. Makes sense. You know what I'm saying? But, like, I don't try to up it based on... um you know, like, what I'm making and that kind of stuff. Like, I, I think, like, every now and again, like, I could spend more if I need to. You yeah. know, I could turn up real quick. Yeah. But I feel like, like, my daily life, like, I'm I'm not that kind of person to, to just, like, ball out and, like, do ex- extra stuff and everything each and every single day just because I got it. Yeah, you told me that. At I'm the, good. We yeah. went, went to a wedding, I want to say, a few months ago. And yeah. you told me that. I told Bay, like, what you told me about, like, the mortgage and everything. I'm just like, it's crazy because, yeah. like, <laughs> that's just crazy because I spend because, a lot of money for no reason. Because think about it. Like, um... I personally feel like, you know, if you're spending, let's say, $30,000 on, like, a house, like, obviously, you you have to be making a lot more it. than that to make sure that thirty k does not feel like a bill. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Literally. But that's why, like, I'm I'm very, very big on having everything on auto pay. You know what I'm saying? No matter what. Bro, everything's on auto pay. Got you. Phone bill, mortgage, insurance, like, everything's on auto pay, which means that all I got to worry about now is what? Business. That's it. Business or just growing in a different field and everything just else versus trying to remember that I have a bill to pay and that kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, why even get to a point that you're going on the internet to actually manually pay a bill that has to get paid every single month? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Wire transfer. Yeah. Put the image. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. All to pay everything. So, okay. So, so, switching over. What do you say to people who are in year three, year <laughs> four, who will look at your story and be like, you know, well, Q made it, you know, by year two, I feel like a failure. Because people who are, like, I made it in year four, yeah. people are saying, oh, I'm in year five, so I made it in year four, it must not be for me, I'm going to quit. No, nah, don't don't look at anybody else. Like, remember, like, how, how much you comprehend is, is is on you. As far as, like, whatever your level of comprehension for a certain subject and everything, like, that's on you. Like, I can't go in a math class and all of a sudden a person that's in the front of the class is getting all A's on, on every single... Every single thing because yep. they're more like their brain just picks up um, mathematical equations better compared to me. Obviously, I, I have to get to that point that I can actually comprehend things as good as them. But at the same time, like I don't try to compare my level of comprehension to somebody else's because it's it's probably different. You know, gotcha. like, I have to learn certain things to actually get over that certain humps. But if it takes me like two, three years, like that's just like like my that's based on like my learning curve and that kind of thing. So I don't try to compare, you know, like m- my learning curve to somebody else's because it's all different. Like everybody processes information differently in some Got kind you. of way. So I don't try to compare. Last and two it, questions. And if you Go do ahead. compare, that's pretty much you making things harder for and yourself. Russian and, it's Russian. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's no Russian trading. Like, listen, it's going to be around. And people think that it's going to go away eventually. Like, bro, like, this has been around before me and you. Absolutely. So it's going to be around. It's just like, whenever you found out about it, it was the right time to find out about it. At the, your You're not journey. too late. You're not too early. You're good. Now, all that you have to do is pretty much just start and continue it. That's it. You know, that's it. So, last two people think making the hundred thousand or the million is important, but talk about covering those other areas, such as making sure your credit is good and your taxes are good as well. Because, you know, when I first started in 2019, in terms of like the education and really making money trading, I'm like, all right, I got money. Let me, let me spend, let me have fun. Me and my wife going here. And then I got a two million dollar tax bill uh-huh. in California. That changed my life, bro. It Cali, <laughs> Cali tax changed my life. So talk to the people out there or the younger b- business people and entrepreneurs. So obviously I know about it, everything now. I'm good now, but who are just starting out? Like it's not about ma- even in trading. It's not just making the money. It's making sure you keep the money and know what to do with it as well. Yeah, and, um, I think it's like um, I mean we're still learning, you know, that same exact thing. Also, like I mean I still got to pay a shit ton of fucking taxes too. But um, whenever you're having fun. I feel like it's very, very important to actually, you know, get that out of your system as well. You know what I'm saying? Get those times that you want to sh- ball out hard and that kind of stuff. But um, never, ever spend too much to the point that, okay, I only use my Amexes. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Um, which means that I only use credit. Like, I don't use um, expenses on my debit side of things because that's real money. Gotcha. Um, it's very important to actually only have... Well, it, the, the best way on how to spend is just on credit because you pretty much pay it off of your, your debit. Yeah, and that yeah, kind of yeah, stuff. yeah. Um, which means that like whatever I'm spending on my credit card, like you know, if I don't have that money in the bank, then I'm how can I spend it? So people have to pretty much only be able to actually spend what they actually have versus some people that actually just like o- overspend w- on money that they don't even have. So like as you're making money and everything else, like you know, have those small expenses, but pretty much get to a point that that cash flow is pretty much consistent to the point that you could actually spend, but knowing that you know how to make the money, you're spending it w- without thinking to yourself, like, damn, like, how am I going to make that money back? 
Gotcha. So get to a point that, um, you know, you're good enough at your craft to know that, like, if you spend this money, that you could actually make it back as well. So, like, I never really went too, too hard in my spending days um, because I felt like I was still, I always felt like, um, it's, it's, it's like one of my in- insecurities also. Like, I always felt like, yo, like, if I spend, like, bro, like, do I have enough to actually, you know, do this or, or, yeah, or yeah, do yeah. that? Like, I always had a feeling that, like, damn, bro, like, next month, this shit might not even work out, man. <laughs> and even though, like, I'm far away from actually, you know, that bottom point, um, I always felt like, bro, like, you know, this can end at, at any point. Any so point. I've always been a little bit, I, I wouldn't say frugal, but I've always been very, very cautious of crazy spending um, because I've always been, been kind of scared to actually, you know, go, go broke in, in some kind of way also. Totally understand. You got to have that healthy fear a little bit. Yeah, no, bit. but like, but it's more like a think broke, you know, like um, spend money, um, but spend it very, very wisely. Don't go too, too hard, but also enjoy yourself at the same time. Um, you know, and yeah, just like understand like how you actually make that money and like what has to, what has to be done to actually make that, that money back. Mm-hmm. If you have no source to make that money back, then you can't spend hard. Be then. careful. You can't spend that extra 20K for that, that month because you probably got like a lucky trade or some shit. Now, like if you have a consistency uh, on, on the charts, then you could, you know, you could spend that big money and everything knowing that, you know, you can make that money back. Like there's been many times that, um, like, for example, like like my next big expense that I gotta fucking do is like yeah, taxes yes, but I gotta um, put a brand new transmission in in, in one of my cars, mm-hmm. fifty thousand dollars. Oh Jesus Christ! For a transmission, I gotta test it. That's a hundred, and then bro, that, that's the whole car. Yeah, <laughs> no, fifty k. But I'm like, damn, bro, like I want to spend it now, but again, I don't want to dip in my fucking bank account. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So yeah, yeah. I gotta make that money on on the charts, and then I can spend it knowing that I can make that money back from that same source that I just made it from. That's how you so I feel like. It. I don't go hard at spending unless I'm I'm having a good week in trading. That makes perfect sense. You know what I'm saying? So like any kind of crazy spending, chart money. Anything. Like I'd love to hear that. Don't touch the fucking bank account. That's how it's motivating. That money is safe money. Like if I ever withdraw from my broker account, goes through like my crypto account and then to my bank account, that money's safe now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't redeposit that money back in so and so. If it goes from let's say broker to crypto exchange, that money can easily go back to fucking broke. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, once it goes from crypto exchange to bank, safe money, that kind of stuff, okay. write, that, write that money off. But um, yeah, just um, try to actually get to a point that you're consistent in your trading to the point that you could actually spend the money, but, but knowing that you can actually make the money back is going to make you a bit more comfortable with the extra spending and that kind of thing. My man. Yeah. Last question. What does the future hold for, for you? You know, like what is, what is your ultimate like, goal? What's the future, bro? You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's the thing. Like the future is is based on the person. Like me and my cousin was driving here, and I was like, bro, like we had um went to like some cul sac that's like around the corner. And everything else, I made the wrong turn. And I was like, bro, like some people is like we we're, we're living in some people's future. That's a fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fact. You get me? Like yeah, that's all right. A fact. Yeah. Because based on how much money you have and everything, like th- there's people before me and you that was been living in the future technically, mm-hmm. as far as been had phones, been had. Slim TVs, like they, they've been at all these things based on the amount of income that they have. Certain people now, like if they have, you know, low income, then technically they can't get access to certain things. So technically they're not in their future yet. Like they're, they're in 2023. Yeah. But their 23, their 2023 is very, very different from our 2023 because we pretty much have access to so much more and everything else. So gotcha. I feel like um, future wise, like, bro, like it's kind of hard to actually think about future, bro, because um, I think I've, I've done so much and the matter of like five, yeah. six, seven, eight, nine years, um, you know, the future, I don't know what it is, like what's able to come. You you're know what I'm saying? You're going to keep rocking. I like to, to, I like to maintain. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't try to think too much because like, bro, like so much can change in in a year. You know, ask me about next week, like what I plan on doing next week, like not in five years because in five years, bro, like so much can change. Like, Who knows? You could literally turn your entire life around in 360 all over. Who knows? I might be a fucking quadrillionaire. In, in a <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But at the same time, based on like, you know, um, how things are flowing like right now, like um, where they're trying to actually maintain with growing our companies. And um, and at that point, you know, out of flow, like I don't like to think too far ahead because, you know, I think you actually tend to overthink the situation yeah. versus just trying to actually, you know, roll with the punches for and, present. and that kind of thing. Yeah. My guy. Yeah. So appreciate yeah. you for coming Got through. You, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that podcast. That is Q Banks. And uh, if you guys want more then um, like I said, Comment below and follow him at, at QBanks yeah. on Instagram. It's everywhere, all yeah. through. QBanks, YouTube, Q-Banks, Twitter, every, everywhere. Yeah. And uh, see you guys for the next one. Got you. Gang, guys. Peace out. Later. Let's get it.
Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. My job is to give you guys all the value that I can possibly give you guys. And I feel like I did that. If you want to see more, do two things. One, subscribe below. But number two, we also did a standing up type of conversation, a simple conversation between two multi-millionaires. Go over to the main channel right now if you want to see that conversation, because all we're doing is just giving away knowledge. So later, guys.